Who were the two most influential figures in the Old Testament? Moses and Samuel. What was their most impactful commonality? Their mama. They both had God-fearing, faithful mom. One's name is Jochebed, the other's name is Hannah. Jochebed and Hannah had three things in common. One was a very short opportunity. You remember the birth of Moses? She put him in a, a basket of reeds and coated it with tar and put him into the, the river. Pharaoh's daughter finds him. His little sister Miriam, with all of the moxie that she has, runs up to Pharaoh's daughter. The daughter of a Hebrew slave runs up to Pharaoh's daughter and says, would you like me to find a Hebrew to nurse him? Go fetch her. She brings Jochebed to her son that she's just given over to the Lord like every other Hebrew mother would have done in her day. But the Lord has something special for this boy. And she gets to nurse him until she weans him. That is probably about three years. Hannah, she prayed to the Lord for a son and the Lord opened her womb and gave her a son. And she said, I'm going to give him back to you as soon as he is weaned. Same amount of years. God raised one of those men up in his early 40s and used him in a way that no other man has ever been used. And he raised the other one up to lead his people in a way that no one else had ever led them. But all they had was a very short opportunity. One had a very short opportunity. It was only by God's provision. And the other had a short opportunity that was by her own vow. But they also had shared something else in common. They shared an agony. It was a shared agony between these two. They both had to give them up. In Exodus, it says that she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became the son of Pharaoh's daughter and Pharaoh's daughter named him Moses. Hannah comes and brings most likely three or four year old Samuel to Eli and says, here, here he is. It says that Hannah rejoiced in the Lord. It does not say that Hannah rejoiced over leaving her son behind. There was an agony there that every mother feels in the, the pit of her stomach while we discuss it. She rejoiced in the Lord, not rejoicing in leaving her son. They both had to leave their sons to the Lord with no way to interfere. Hannah had made a vow. She couldn't go back and interfere. It says that she came year by year with the yearly sacrifices and brought him a, a new, she, she made him a new set of clothes and brought it to him every year, but he stayed there. And Moses went into the, the house of Pharaoh and was separated from his mother. Now they both had short opportunities and a shared agony. And both of these ladies saw a sure effectiveness from their influence as a mother. I've told you that good parenting does not focus on tomorrow. Good parenting focuses on 50 years from now. Maybe you as a mom wonder how much you're, you're affecting your children's life. It's more than you can denote in any way. There's no way that you can calculate it. It's incalculable. One handed her son over to pagans in Egypt. One handed, the other handed her son over to a hard-hearted, wretched, sinful high priest. And yet God took both of them and accomplished the inexplicable because of the influence of the mother.